all of us and not it just be a straight information um, delivery thing. And uh, it just feels like there's a little bit of energy in this room now that wasn't here half an hour ago. So thanks for that. Yeah. Um, and uh, and with regards to my group, it's kind of funny when I heard you say before we even started about consensus, and I was like, we haven't even started the conversation, and we have 15 minutes. Consensus just seems like uh, I'm I'm an optimist, but that seemed like an impossibility. Um, anyway, so uh, and true to I guess my expectation, what I um, in our group, I can't say that there we were all. The first question that got put out is, what is most important to you? And the second was, what's one action that you might move that forward with? And uh, a diversity of, um, of things that are important from um, uh, availability of weapons around the world, what can be done to put Canada back on the map in terms of a leadership around uh, women's issues, um, e ecological and uh, natural world basics to ensure that everybody gets that, um, building communications between um, organizations that are sort of related or, or interconnected but moving their own things forward, um, uh, video games for kids that are violent. Um, well, it's actually looking to eliminate that. So, um, what does SWO? It's the biggest, biggest learning industry in the world. Um, SW, I don't even know what that note means to me, but it's uh, it's related to, but I'll say the thing that did tie many of the ideas together was around um, having educational campaigns to get the word out to engage more of us to move things forward, I'll say is the, the piece that brings it all together. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. Thanks, Shelley. Um, and uh, credit where credit's due, it was an email from Lynn that prompted the redesign at this hour. So let's let's thank Lynn for that connection. Uh, um, the group here, I mean, this is one of the wonderful thing about women's conferences. Almost never do the plans work out the way we think they're going to work out. So in fact, the one group was three groups on this side and uh, um, folks clustered around their table and had their conversation. And um, I, I probably won't do justice to the nuances of your conversations, but what I've picked up from, from chatting with each group is the raising of awareness, so that's highly consistent with the emphasis on education and, and sharing of information that came out of the um, group on this side of the room. But with a, a bit of a, an angle on that, which was to emphasize in the raising of awareness um, that the message that the Harper Neocon government and related allies reinforce over and over again is how powerless we are and how unimportant we are and how uninformed we are. Well, of course, we're uninformed because most of the engines of information that we've come to rely on have been shut down. Um, so actually knowing what's happening in our own country, something as basic as the census has been greatly reduced. Um, so that was one of the key points. And then another was uh, on the question of 1325 and the related suite of resolutions, women, peace building, responding to uh, countries in conflict and post-conflict, and women's leadership, various kinds of leadership, and the value of working in the groups where we are already associated. Not creating new organizations, but taking them to our book club, to our church club, to um, any of the associations where women tend to gather, our quilting club, um, and, uh, and, and raise awareness right there. So that every time we leave a place where we're already going, we've raised the general level of awareness on this issue and the whole idea of providing support in some way to women peace builders, um, whether, whether they be women peace builders at home or in a country in conflict or post-conflict. And then the third point, um, primary point, was to build on General Recommendation 30 of the CEDAW Committee, which so explicitly goes after this idea of this false separation between corporations registered in countries and the lack of responsibility that the states have for what those corporations may be doing. And to bring home the responsibility mechanisms for the corporations. And of course, the most obvious example 
that came up from the group that made this point was the extractions industry. Uh, and, but one could, one could take that in many directions. We could remind ourselves that in Canada we don't have asbestos, um, we have outlawed it, and um, the Canadian government and diplomats actively promote the sale of asbestos in less advantaged countries. So that would be another example. But it's, a, it's erasing this false protection, this veil of protection for corporations that are Canadian corporations and what they may or may not be engaged in internationally that contributes to the destabilization and cultures of violence in conflict and post-conflict countries. So that's the, that's the wrap up. And um, I think in terms of, uh, of our time, that what we want to do is get back on agenda as much as possible. I hope that this session has left you with a sense that there is some progress that has been made primarily at the diplomatic level. And any further progress that occurs is really up to civil society. It has always been so. We cannot rely on governments to take initiatives and follow through on human rights, particularly the human rights of women and children. Thank you so much.